Hello, my name is Dina Falcone, herbalist, educator, author of Foraging and Feasting, and Earthly Bodies and Heavenly Hair. And what are we going to be focusing on today is Ella Campaign, this gorgeous, handsome yellow flower that you see surrounding me. And <laughs> just to put a little plug in for my new course, it's called Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies. You can check out that at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. So the focus though of today is this handsome, beautiful Asteraceae perennial. And what is the gift of the medicine? What is the medicine of this plant? This is not a food plant, this is a medicine plant. And it is used for lung health, for digestive health. Those are the two primary uses in my mind. Um, and how are they used? So how is Elecampane and Nula Helenium of the Asteraceae family used to support our health? It's used in lung, in upper respiratory formulas, in lung formulas. It's used in digestive formulas. How is it helpful? What does it do? So the energy of this plant is that it is quite an aromatic, spicy, cleansing, warming, dispersive, stimulating um, cleanser. Did I say that already? <laughs> and so what we do is we use the roots. I'm showing you this gorgeousness in bloom, but in fact, it's the roots that I'm trained to use medicinally. Some herbalists do use the flowers. Um, yeah, so in terms of medicinal qualities, um, let's talk about that a little bit more. So you would put the roots of second to third year plants after frost. You're going to harvest those roots after the plant has died back. Let's say I'm out here, it's late November, I'm digging up those roots and I'm going to dry them and use them in a tea or I'm going to use them fresh in um, a tincture or in aromatic bitters. It's, it's used in absinthe. Um, so what's, what's the effect? It's an expectorant, it's an antitussive. So what does that mean? It helps bring phlegm out, it helps calm coughs, it helps clean infections, uh, supports the body to get infections out of the body. And also digestively, what's going on with this root is it helps us to um, create more enzymatic activity, more bile secretion. So we've got a digestive stimulant here. What else about elecampane? It's also used <laughs> as a vermifuge. What is a vermifuge? It's something that helps us to get rid of worms. And what else about elecampane? Um, it's also used in urinary tract related issues. Again, that's not my training or I don't use it in that way. I really love this for upper respiratory infections um, and for clearing phlegm. So we're talking about asthma, bronchitis, things like that, colds, flus, more colds, I should say, coughs and colds. Okay, let's get into the idea of it. And here you can see that it is about maybe six feet tall here, but I just want you to know that it can actually grow quite a big, you know, maybe seven feet plus. And then let's meander about and you can see a couple of other um, specimens. Just to give you a sense of it in the landscape, here we've got it. It's a pretty nice tall one. That's what I was standing next to. And then we've got maybe a five footer or a four and a half foot. And here and here, right here is black eyed Susan. It's also in the Asteraceae family, but it is not Elecampane. So just to give you the sense of it in the landscape, Elecampane also often will fall over. Its flowering stem will fall. So there we have it. Um, you can see that's what went on. So come on over and I'm going to show you the basil rosette leaves and up close I'll so show you the aerial leaves and these flowers. Great. So here we are looking at the basil rosette of Ella Campaign. And here it is and you can see it's quite a nice size. This is what it looks like uh, without the flower stalk in basil rosette. Here's the uh, Ella Campaign basil rosette leaf and you can see that it is quite long. It can go up to 16 inches or even more. 
and it has a very long leaf stalk right here. This is called a petiole and that's right here. So we've got a really long leaf stalk. And let's talk about leaf shape. So as a plant detective, you're always looking for leaf shape. And you can see that this tip is super pointy. You've got a pointy elecampane leaf hoop. I just broke the tip, whoops. <laughs> and then here you have what you would call an ovate shape. It can also often be elliptic. It can also be a lanceolate, but this is pretty nice example, I think, of ovate. Um, and then I'm hoping that you can see, maybe we need to get macro here, but the leaf margins have um, teeth irregularly so, or slight, uh, slight serrations, but sometimes it's not there and they're more wavy. This one's got a little bit of crenate activity. And then I'm going to flip it. And can you see the backside that it's lighter and woolier? So you're gonna do that. This basil rosette leaf doesn't show the wooliness as much as the um, other specimens. Let's go back to the plant so you can see more leaf morphology. Basically, you can see the leaf change as it grows up the plant. It really shifts, so I want you to see that, okay? Let's go check that out. Here we are, basil rosette give, gives rise to these flower stems, these main stems, and these aerial leaves alternate up the main stem. So you can see that, an alternate leaf arrangement. Beautiful thing. And here you can see that the leaf, the area leaf has lost its leaf stalk and is actually attaching to this main stem right here, clasping it. So that's called clasping. It's a sessile area leaf that clasps the stem. Here you have a sessile area leaf. And if you flip it to its underside, you can see how woolly it is and how light colored the underside of the leaf is. Elecampane flowers are mini sunflowers. They're in the same family, the Asteraceae of a sunflower. And this is the disc flower made of these tubes. And these are the ray flowers that are the dancing, twirling dress. This is where the actual seeds form. And let's just move up so you can see here is a flower further along in its blooming stage. And if we again go to the tip of this flowering stalk, we see a pollinated flower head where this is where the seeds are forming. So you can see the progression of the flower is a beautiful thing. So we've just moved because it was a bit shaky there the last shot. So I just want you to be able to see this is a spent flower, basically a flower that hopefully has been pollinated and it's done doing its thing and the seeds are developing in this stage. Where are you gonna find Elecampane? It's native to Europe and to Western Asia but it has spread itself all about the United States in zones three to eight, the hardiness zones of the USDA. So you're gonna find this around the United States. What kind of a habitat? So <laughs> we are in a wild garden. It does like to grow in moist, damp, but well-drained soils that are fertile in full sun to part shade. Those are also hints and hoping that you'll want to plant some if you don't have some in your neighborhood. So you're looking for elecampane in fields, in ditches, in anthropogenic sites, in sites that humans have made. Elecampane, Enula, Helenium of the Asteraceae family is an amazing ally for upper respiratory health, for digestive health. One note is that it is particularly warming and perhaps a little bit irritating and drying. And so I've got another amazing ally right behind me, and that is marsh mallow. Sometimes in formulas, I'd like to add a, I like to add a little marshmallow to soften, to soothe, to moisten the Elecampane's energetics. So 
May you bring this amazing root medicine into your life. May it help you to stay healthy and well. And if you like this <laughs> and you'd like more, check out my new online course, wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you next time.